it is a great pleasure to um, start this meeting. And with no further ado, I will um, uh, seize the uh, seize the um, floor to uh, Chairperson Dr. Bofi. All right. So welcome to the Board of Health meeting uh, for June second of 2022. Um, the first item on the agenda is the uh, approval of the board minutes from the April meeting. Um, Mr. Fisk, any issues or, or nope, edits? No, no, yeah. uh, so do I hear a motion? Yep. Okay, motion to approve. Accept. Okay, yeah. all in favor, aye. Second item on the agenda is, um, is uh, to be heard by the board today is uh, from uh, Mr. May uh, about the life science mm -hmm. bioready community um, issue. Um, Mr. May? All right, good evening, Dr. Brophy and uh, board members. Uh, I am here with uh, John Fay, who um, is a senior economic development planner in, the, uh, in our office. And we're here to discuss a proposal or a request, I should say, for the Board of Health to adopt the National Institute of Health's RDNA guidelines. Um, so these are the um, uh, regulations that control bio research in, um, in the US and um, an organization called Mass Bio, which represents the biotech industry here in Massachusetts, um, along with the Mass Life Science Center, has um, created a program that they're calling Bio-Ready Communities. Brockton is currently Bio-Ready Gold, but there is one step ahead of that um, that we would like to achieve, and that is platinum. And in order to become a platinum community, one of the things that we need to do is have the Board of Health uh, adopt these regulations. And I am going to turn it over to John Fay uh, to discuss a little bit about the, the regulations and the draft that we have circulated with you and what other communities have adopted this. We are not um, standing out there on our own, but um, people have, have been there before us, but we need to catch up a little. So, John? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for having us again. Uh, so, similar to last month, we're, we're trying to start a dialogue, which will eventually, we hope, result in your adoption of the NIH guidelines, which aren't so much regulations as they are as they say, uh, guidelines themselves, um, where committees will be set up in uh, the representative companies in order to follow said guidelines. Um, so we have uh, I sent you uh, a draft of uh, an MOU in order to adopt, which basically just makes a few plain statements that we are uh, going to abide by these guidelines and we will have whatever companies who come in abide by said guidelines. Um, uh, they are quasi-public economic development and investment agency. So when we do, if we do achieve platinum status, uh, that opens up a lot of funding opportunities for us. Um, they deployed, Mass Bio themselves have deployed more than $700 million uh, into the industry in the past decade, roughly. Uh, there are tax incentive programs. Uh, we are already, it does sail nicely with uh, some of the work that's already being completed here in Brockton, mm -hmm. uh, namely um, internship opportunities that the Mass Life Science Center has set up um, and programs that they have their students matriculating through in order to develop the skills in order to be workers in this industry. Uh, Likewise, we are uh, working on having in the Good Sam Lovett Brook area a, a life science campus. Um, so this will help us in a way advertise uh, that we are ready, uh, we are infrastructurally ready, and that we are politically ready, so to speak, uh, to have life science companies come in and do work with us. A request will be that whatever following whatever due diligence you decide is appropriate, uh, that you adopt these NIH guidelines for our DNA. Um, Rob said one of the, the two necessary steps. 
it's more a planning related step. Um, John, could you highlight a couple of the communities that have adopted this already in Massachusetts? Absolutely. Um, so Chelmsford, uh, there are, as of right now, about 25% of the state is participating in the program overall, not 25% are platinum. Uh, there are two, 32 communities that have achieved platinum status. Um, Chelmsford, Lowell, um, I'm pulling it up here. So for Platinum, we have Andover, Bedford, Bill Ricca, Beverly, Boston, Burlington, um, Cambridge, Canton, Chelmsford. And then so in gold, there, there are a few more. I don't want to <laughs> waste your time going through every single one, uh, but we would be up in that final tier with them. Uh, currently, we are in gold with cities in towns like Ashland, in Chicopee. Um, and there are two tiers underneath us. Uh, silver is, is Chelsea, Dedham, Holyoke, et cetera. And the bronze are, are smaller communities, Acton, Abington, Arlington, Auburn. This would put us at the very tippy top um, and position us nicely for continued economic growth um, industry. Running opportunities. So, to this end, we've been working with uh, Ben Bradford, who is the Vice President of Economic Development at MassBio. Helped us, along with some other planning professionals uh, around the state, develop a, a memorandum of understanding to adopt, and which basically, like I said, states that we will abide by the NIH guidelines, um, and it would not impose any duties upon the Board of Health in order in 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 a sense of oversight or citation issuance, et cetera. Uh, in a way, they, they're, they're, their councils govern themselves um, and they, are, they adhere strictly to these NIH guidelines. So Other you have, that? oh, I'm sorry, John. So you have a, uh, a draft in front of you um, or, or it has been distributed, I, I, I'll say, to, at least to Dr. Mondasor, and I hope that he has made that available to you. And we apologize for being a tad late in getting that. Um, we took the draft that was distributed last meeting, um, or would have been distributed at the last meeting, but we didn't have quorum. And so we updated that just a little bit to take on a Brockton flair. Um, more about the Brockton Board of Health and the Brock, we'll do this, that, and the other. Um, so what we would like to do is um, take questions from you. We might not be able to ha have all the answers tonight, um, but we're willing to come back as many times as necessary. Um, but if you have questions uh, from the board and from Dr. Mondesor, um, we will um, do our best to answer those um, and, and um, satisfactorily uh, advance this process. I think the only thing that I have is that I haven't had a chance to look at, uh, maybe they sent it to me, but I haven't had a chance to look at it. And of course, being a small businessman, anything with uh, planning and economic development, I'd certainly be interested in. Yeah. I just uh, uh, would like to you know, be able to see it and, and read it over a little bit. And probably also when the, uh, you know, the, uh, the other doctors here too, uh, you know, the three of us would be able to, you know, instead of just the two of us here at this time. But I'd like to look it over a little bit more since I haven't, you know, I'm a little, <laughs> I haven't seen it. So, uh, yeah. but it sounds, it sounds like it's certainly a good thing. Yeah, you have, um, you have two sets of documents that I sent to you. Yeah, so, I prop, yeah. The, well, I mean, actually two separate emails and each email has two sets of documents. So there is uh, what right. is called MOU, uh, but it's presented in a way that uh, it's written kind of as a resolution if you look at it from, I guess, a political standpoint. So um, we may need to go over this. Um, I maybe I'm suggesting to Dr. Wolf, maybe if she wants to go with the hearing um, and then uh, visit that document and then see if there is anything that we need to um, adjust to our recommendations. Um, so um, if she needs to uh, delay, um, giving you the final result this evening, I would be um, 
fine with that as well. So I'll, I'll be done. happy to. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say I'd be happy to um, continue this uh, discussion. Um, I know it is a lengthy read um, and a very fun read. Um, God, I love legal documents, but um, you know, please uh, take a look at it. And if you have questions, um, you can email us directly at uh, planning at cobma.us or um, email Dr. Montessori. I hope he will uh, do us a favor of forwarding that to us. I'm sorry, I put extra duties on you, sir. But um, we, we would be very happy to um, take questions and uh, uh, provide answers at an appropriate time. And don't you worry, I'll, I'll ask the mayor to send you the bill. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> and, uh, this is uh, this Mary Brophy. Um, I did have a, a, a couple of questions because I did have a chance, uh, based on last um, month's discussion, um, uh, to um, look through things. And you know, this is a first step, right, uh, in the planning. Is that in order to move forward in the planning, you need this this document to be able to move forward. And then companies would come forward. Um, and you know, the NCI guidelines are are, are are incredibly extensive. I looked through 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 those as well, and and. The one thing I, I uh, wanted to ask about, because um, you know, the, the, you're saying the board has no responsibility for for duties for oversight of companies. What I, I'd like to understand what the oversight is, um, because guidelines are guidelines, and most laboratories do undergo external uh, uh, reviews um, of, of their procedures and, and processes. I, I just would like to understand. Uh, what what assurances there are that as companies move in that these inspections are being done and they are actually following the appropriate guidelines. And you don't need to answer that today. I, I, you know, this is where um, I, I you Stop know uh, what what is right. the oversight uh, for the companies and and uh, and meeting guidelines and uh, the other. Uh, you may not have the answers, but I'm certain you know the. Um, the uh, by, the uh, mass bio uh, probably uh, would be they, able to guide us. In. They go through most um, biotech firms go through a, a licensing process and oversight from the Massachusetts Board of Health, and our regulations that we're proposing um, would allow the Board of Health to create a uh, licensing process in Massachusetts are in, in Brockton, excuse me. So, um, uh, and um, would allow people to apply and they would come and, and present to you um, their plans, but the majority of the oversight actually comes from uh, the Mass Board of Health uh, and, and the uh, department that, that handles bioregulations. Got it. So We've what also written- Board is, is deferring what would be local oversight of a, of a company to the Mass uh, Board of Health. So there is, a, there is an oversight group looking at what the companies are doing. Yes, and we'll come back with some more information on that and who actually, uh, who the contacts are and, and that kind of thing. Um, we've also written into this um, resolution um, that the, uh, if the Board of Health were to hire a consultant to do inspections or to do review of applications, that those costs would be borne by the applicant. So you would be re uh, reimbursed uh, for all your costs uh, and time. Got it, okay. Yeah, that was my next question is having uh, the expertise on the board. Uh, to be able to evaluate uh, the whatever appropriate um, manufacturing mm -hmm. science or science being done at these labs, um, you know, so that uh, having that ability to to have a consult uh, a consultant come in, um, uh, external third party one uh, to advise the board would be uh, that's a, a a nice feature. So, so thank you. I've seen that it it the level of oversight is you know is differentiated by how much that selected municipality wishes to make it complicated. Uh, there are some who write 
their own regulations from soup to nuts, and there are some who, like we are proposing, uh, adopt this resolution. So, so the there's a flexibility in the agree. Uh, what the agreement will spell out is the extent of oversight of the Board of Health for the city compared to the state management of this. Um, and do you, uh, you know, I'd like to have a, a better idea of, of um, what the other communities um, have been doing um, as far as how, okay. how engaged is the local board of health, uh, the type of expertise needed at the boards um, to, to be able to do this. Um, just a better understanding. I, I don't know how long this has been in place and how, how long these communities, they're obviously a biotech company up and running in these communities, but uh, we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. We do need to find what's sure. the right uh, fit for um, for the city, um, and based on um, the expertise that we have, uh, to 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 do this. So, uh, you know, uh, getting some sense of of the degree between uh, what the you know we defer completely to the mass um, board of public health. Uh, what type of reviews are being done? How will they be in contact with the city? Uh, about what's happening in the city, um, et cetera, are kind of the thing. So uh, knowing what communities have fully deferred, those that uh, have regulations in place, or do all of them have some underlying regulations uh, in place about local control would be um, something that I think the board would, would like to know about. Sounds like a good research project. Yes, it is. <laughs> we'll, we'll be on that. Yeah, yeah. I think you know it, it's it's wonderful that we're moving in this direction. Again, it's balancing what uh, what the capabilities are for uh, you know the the safe oversight of, of uh, man, particularly in the manufacturing range uh, of, um, of um, in this in this technology. But clearly, these lab you know there is usually laboratories of this nature. Yeah. They're very strict rules. They're very uh, guidelines. If you follow them, they're incredibly safe. Um, and uh, you know the assurances of, of uh, how that oversight is being done. And at what level, with what expertise, is, is uh, I think important for us to understand uh, uh, moving forward. Definitely, we will put that together for you and send that off to you great. probably at the end of next week. Okay, great. And get that out uh, to the other, you know, um, Dr. Andres, uh, who uh, you know um, um, used to work at the uh, has uh, expertise oh, yeah. from the math board. Uh, I would, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's one that, uh, you know, uh, we need uh, input from all members of the board uh, to give Mr. Fish time to look at the materials. I've had uh, a time to at least look things over. Um, again, my questions were about what extent and, and the board's participation and how much the city engagement it will be. But I would also, you know, uh, uh, appreciate Dr. Andre's uh, input on this as well. So. Okay, I, I, I appreciate that too. Mr. Fisk, and then again, uh, Dr. Any, any other questions on your part or? No, no, I just want to, you know, like Dr. Andre involved too, so. Yeah. Okay, we'll put so that we better just put that on hold for a while. <laughs> All right. So if I, to summarize Dr. Brophy, um, if um, I were to say that um, Mr. Fay, uh, Mr. Uh, May and uh, Faye would, um, do a little bit more uh, research and then send that information to us. And then that would be uh, the next step for, for the project. So we'll reconvene uh, with them again for um, our next monthly meeting, which may be, I don't know, depend uh, on the pleasure of the, uh, of the uh, directors. Uh, if you want to have a meet, whole meeting in July or in August, so that would be um, your preference. Uh, I know you usually have one month where you, you do not meet. So yeah, can, I mean, okay. to me, either either month uh, off. I, I I think it depends on. I I'm not sure, uh, Mr. May, and and uh, uh, what what the uh, oh, sort of time. We'll be here. You'll be there. Okay. And we'll uh, is there. there any timeline or pressure that you are under, or or is this something that? Uh, um, are there other, are, is the Board of Health holding up other planning? Oh, no, issues? no. No, okay, no. all right. We can get this done by Christmas, that'd be wonderful. Got it, okay, wonderful. So then, um, uh, you know, like I've, I've asked you for a lot of information, uh, you know, trying to explore no what's problem. going on in the other 
folks. So, uh, you know, what we might do is, is uh, we've routinely taken off uh, the um, July meeting because it usually falls the week of the 4th of July when many people are away and then plan for the August meeting. But if you have the information to get to us uh, before the meeting so that we have time to review it uh, before the August meeting, that would be wonderful. So. Definitely. Okay, great. So, great. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Yep. Thank, thank you for coming. All right. All right. And uh, look forward to working with you. Take care. Bye now. Bye bye. All right. All right. So um, let's move on to the next item on the agenda. I guess, uh, uh, Dr. Mona, so going through some of the COVID data as far as uh, where the city stands and things on our dashboard um, and uh, our vaccination status, if you, if you want to go through uh, that. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Brophy, and uh, thank you, Mr. Fisk. Um, I did speak with um, Dr. Andre this morning, so he did express to me his uh, frustration because he is now actively teaching, so he may not be able to continue regularly, but uh, I think he's going to be in touch with, with us. Uh, but with that said, I'll transition to the um, latest um, data on the dashboard. Um, I did include in the report as I was sending it on Tuesday, um, the data for that particular date, um, which was uh, May 31st. So at that point we had uh, 30,369 cumulative cases and uh, actively we did have 255 uh, people uh, with COVID in the city. And, um, there were 17 uh, cases being reported at that morning of this of uh, May. I mean uh, May 31st. Uh, also, we did have 495 deaths when I was writing it. However, up to this morning, we we have added two more deaths. So right now, as of this morning, June 2nd, we are at 497 deaths uh, total. And the current active cases uh, is 285. Um, as I keep mentioning every opportunity that I have, the current active uh, positive cases that we have is underreported because this is only this reflects only the numbers that we have from Maven, which is the Massachusetts uh, Virtual Epidemiological Network data or the, um, dash, the, uh, the state dashboard, all the home test uh, kits uh, that people use, they do not report. So we don't right. have that. So uh, one other um, uh, dashboard that we have right now is the um, wastewater um, yeah. uh, in the city. So for, I think, third time since we've been collecting data, um, we receive it as we have it over 1 million copies per one liter of sewer. So that's very high concentration and it exceeds, it's about over 83% uh, higher than most of the other uh, municipalities. So, yeah. So, well, uh, <clears throat> yeah. No, I was just going to say, you know, because the, you know, the overall, I think um, the the um, rates have been going down, and the and uh, I, I thought, you know, the state seems to be past post peak, and and things were starting to move in the right direction, but we're obviously still not have not reached our peak, um, in in the city, so um, which is unfortunate. So, um, you know, the, the continued vigilance on the part of uh, folks within the within the city and uh, getting vaccinated, uh, wearing masks and, and et cetera is, uh, is um, unfortunate, but uh, we do have a bit of a, of a, uh, of a uh, rise here in the city. So we're, we're not past the current um, bump that has been happening. It's certainly not as bad as January, but it is, uh, you know, we're still in the, it looks like we're still in the upward trend here, so. Yes, and um, the, Rates also for hospitalization, we are, as of yesterday, we were at 16 hospitalizations. And uh, the total number of people uh, being positive per 100,000 
in Brockton for the last seven days is 183.4. And the positive rate is 5.35. Yeah. That's obviously an underestimation based on home testing, so. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, okay. Right. And also with respect to vaccination, we have reduced our presence at the Cavalian Association because the numbers have dropped so significantly uh, to single digit. And so to try to uh, really manage uh, our resources, we have moved it to every other week instead of every week. So today the nurses, we have two nurses there and the clinic opens at 1.30 and it will be uh, closed at 4.30. Uh, er, before it was open from 2 to 6 p.m. And in a meeting with the mayor, uh, we have decided that it's probably better to uh, use the public health nurses of the Board of Health and have them work until 4.30, uh, which will also help us save uh, some money so that we don't go over the budget since we are approaching the, uh, the end of uh, fiscal year 2022 or uh, FY22, which ends on June 30th. So we're making all due diligence to make sure that uh, we don't spend what we don't have also. Okay, all right. And, uh, and then the other two clinics that are, uh, con I would say, current, both of them are stationed at the, um, uh, the Shaw Center. One is on Tuesdays, 2 to 7 p.m. with the Board of Health nurses. And on Saturday, it is with Booster Ambulance. And the state pays for that, for that clinic uh, on Saturday morning. And it, it goes, it runs from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then and we also, in addition, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, I was just going to say, obviously, this is, you know, the ability to get these are, are posted uh, so the, uh, the community is aware uh, of, the, of the times. So. Yes, yes. And also, the nurses are very active um, with the low rise and high rises. Uh, we go there every so often, almost every week to vaccinate also. The numbers are very encouraging. I mean, people coming to get vaccinated. Two weeks ago, we had a clinic at the um, Council on Aging and we did 131 vaccination. And that, was with, that was with two of the um, uh, Board of Health nurses and one per DM, one that we usually use um, one of the two nurses that we usually use to help us uh, vaccinate. Great. No, that's wonderful because you know the uh, uh, you know part of this uh, the, the surge. I think a, a lot of people um, didn't get boosted, and uh, you're boosting probably the the most vulnerable by going to the high rises and the uh, and the uh, council for aging. So I encourage you to continue that. Um, so. Thank you. Thank you. And on that same vein, let me say that the mayor is very uh, encouraging, very supportive. I, we have been pushing to see if we could get an official test site um, for, at the city. And Curative, which is an organization statewide, well, actually, I should say nationwide, um, they have good reputation of um, doing testing. So right now we are. Uh, on final stage to invite them in. They have reached out to us uh, offering the help. They would not charge the city. They would simply charge the insurance of the uh, people coming to get um, tested. Great, okay, good. Yeah, I mean, if, uh, if that can happen, that would be wonderful to be able to have um, uh, more testing in the city for folks that don't have um, capabilities of, of, of having access to the home testing or affording the home testing. So that, that would be, uh, that would be a, a, a welcome addition. So hopefully you can be successful in, in moving that forward. So. Mr. Pisk, hey. any questions, sir? No, it, it seems like he's hitting the right places too. You know, the high okay. rises, he's hitting the, uh, the places that should be, you know, he should concentrate on too, which is good. 
And obviously, uh, you know, the health promotion and public health, I, I'm sure all the organizations are continuing to support the work and encouraging folks um, to, to be vaccinated, et cetera. So uh, any, any further update on that or? Um... Uh, we continue to work with um, the uh, school, the public schools, the community health organizations, the churches, to see how we can uh, continue to um, educate and motivate individuals. So we continue to work on that. And we are also uh, bringing in two new epidemiologists or 1.5, in other words, full, full time, and then one at 0.5. Uh, most likely they will start on June 13. Uh, the reason I mentioned them here is that with them, we will be able to uh, do uh, to expand on research and look at other aspects of uh, health challenges, uh, health inequities, and be able to document them, to collect data and uh, analyze them and be able to uh, understand, uh, better understand um, through COVID how to address those other needs. So I, I encourage you to, to, to do that. And I know uh, sort of taking things out of order a bit on the agenda, but the, you know, the symposium that you're planning uh, for the city, uh, you know, um, of the lessons learned as well as how to build a healthier community has to take into account. I mean, we've been so focused on COVID, but there are so many other um, issues uh, regarding public health in the city that, uh, that uh, attention needs to be paid to um, so that we have to sort of as we move hopefully from the pandemic to the endemic phase of this uh, to get back on, on concentrating on, on those issues. And I think uh, I encourage you um, to, you know, utilize the epidemiologist and the way you see fit um, to uh, not just be focused on COVID stuff, but to, to um, look at the overall situation of the health in the city as, uh, as we move forward. So. Yes, thank you so much. I don't have, um much update on it yet because there were a few issues I was trying to uh, set the tone uh, before I could uh, push it forward. So um, we're having the new epidemiologists coming on in uh, the second week of June. So once they end, I believe that we probably, well, I'm planning to set a date and then once they come in, then we can, we'll be able to um, set a date uh, along with the approval of the mayor, because uh, I would love the city to be, uh, I mean, the city, the mayor's office to be an integral part of that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So. All right. Um, and then any other um, further information on sort of the um, new face of the Board of Health or? Um... Um, next week we are having a meeting so i don't know exactly how it will go but um the meeting uh, the mayor has um called up a meeting for next week and i believe that the law department finance will be there as well um so from that point i i mean i don't know if i'm not sure why uh or if he has reached out to the board but um i know that he has uh Asked me to um, set aside a time or to um, put on the on my agenda the meeting uh, so that we could go over reorganization of the board of health. Okay, all right. Um, no, yeah, he's not reached out as of yet uh, to us, but again, uh, we're we're available for discussion. So, um, and um, as I say, to, you know, to, as they reorganize. Um, the, the money that's available and grants that are available, how it's structured um, is important. And again, Dr. Andre uh, has some expertise in this um, and sort of uh, ability to guide the city in a way that they, they get uh, the most support uh, for building a, a uh, structure of a board of health that meets the needs of the, the city. So um, I'm happy to assist in whatever way we can. So. Thank All you. Right. And then, um, Next item uh, uh, is the um, uh, special visit to the Southeastern DMH. Yes, I did have a successful meeting with the director, um, uh, Ms. McKinnon, uh, Mona McKinnon. And so she has uh, extended an offer for me to join the board, but I don't want to just um, put on my plate too many things uh, to the point where I cannot uh, really deliver. Uh, 
I welcome the idea, but I have extended um, our request to her to recommend someone that I know who might be on that board there. So I continue to serve with the state uh, uh, statewide advisory council for mental health, as well as um, uh, sitting meeting with the um, uh, behavioral health task force for the city of Rock Rockton as well. For now. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Fisk? No. I, I just had one in, in regard to the uh, Jacob Driscoll Engineering. Did we miss that? That was. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, that was on the agenda. I think they contacted um, uh, Dr. Montessori before the meeting uh, to withdraw the application for, for this month. Oh, they so, did. Okay. Uh, That's just what so I, I will, didn't want to miss that. probably be present at the next meeting. So. Oh, okay. Yes, my apologies. So I forgot to mention this. Yeah, I just wanted to, I know it hadn't been brought up. So I just want to make sure that it wasn't left out. <laughs> and any you. other items for the board any other issues um okay, so there is one, one issue dr Buffy. i may have to speak with you offline on this at some other time um is the medicine paxlovid that yes. this has made available for people but i think we've had some issue uh of um lack of access for some people in the city so we we'll probably okay. you and i probably would have a conversation uh before some technical um um approach to that okay all right happy to happy to advise so um and then um so next meeting uh so we've decided we'll probably since it's still the week of july 4th we will cancel the the uh that we will not hold um as we routinely don't uh the july meeting in the summer and our next planned meeting then would be august 4th of 2022. okay uh, I would. Uh, I, I want to bring up if Dr. Andres has a conflict now with the time. Um, uh, can we explore with him? Is there another time that maybe on this done or another? Uh, you know, if we have to call a meeting and, and, and to be able to vote on it or, or deal with this issue regarding the um, uh, mass bio um, and becoming a platinum uh, city. Um, you know, if we uh, if he's possible uh, you know with enough notice we can we can uh, alter the time and um, uh, of the meeting to adjust to his schedule um, so it's something to consider and uh, maybe um, uh, you know offline we can have a discussion with him but uh, we certainly would have to make an announcement that the, that the time of the meeting has been changed but uh, but uh, or that we call a special meeting um, in order for dr. Um, dr. Andre to be involved so I love that. So, do you would you want me to contact? Yeah, uh, if you yeah, just approach him to see. Uh, you know, we uh, again not having a July meeting and August meeting. Uh, maybe in the summer in July by August he's not teaching his class. It conflicts with this, uh, but uh, I think it's worth exploring. We have enough time between now and August uh, to 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 see if uh, we can uh, come to some accommodation to allow him to to uh, participate in the meeting. So. Okay, I'll certainly do. Okay. All right. Great. All right. With no other items, so I, I, um, I got one this, issue that I uh, always talk that I bring up this time of year. Um, it, it regard to you know you, you go around the city and I think we're responsible for it or we can find people for not mowing their lawn. I always bring it up this time of year. Uh, you know the the, the rodents and, and trash and uh, different things like that around the city. I mean, you know, most of the people keep their lawns very well, but I mean, I mean, you can go just down Pleasant Street or a lot of different places and, and nobody's even touched their lawns. Uh, is there still fines that, that, for that type of thing? Does anybody, you know, I know we have plenty of other things to do beside that, but you know, when people come into our city, uh, you know, you go around and it's, it, it seems like it's worse than it ever has been. Yes, we do have that. That's uh, standing ordinances uh, among the uh, standing ordinances. So our inspectors uh, do enforce that. And uh, so as many as we can on a regular basis, we do reach out to them just as we do for um, um, dumpsters as well, because there are many um, dumpsters 
two different types, um, regular dumpsters or temporary dumpsters. So those are issues that our inspectors keep their eyes open uh, for, and we continue to do that. And clear, yeah, that's clearly essential. there's an issue in, in a yard where there's you know trash building up and, and uh, rodent issues, et cetera. Yes, I guess that the board can, can intervene um, uh, with it. So. So there are ordinances on on uh, on on record. I, I I don't know how, um, you know, you know it, it is an issue. It is the time too when everything's in bloom. Um, uh, you know that uh, the, the uh, resources uh, availability um, for the inspectors to actually do this. So, uh, but um, maybe maybe next time you could give us a little report on 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 this, uh, Dr. Montessori, at the next meeting just. Uh, an update on, on um, you know, the, the, the capability, the resources of, and uh, what's going on in the way of, of, uh, of issues related to, you know, the um, upkeep of, um, of um, the um, um, properties. Yeah. Properties within the city. Yeah. Mm. Okay. okay. Yeah. Certainly will do. Okay, great. Any other issues? Oh, that's so it. with that, a uh, motion to approve, Mr. Fisk? Motion to approve. Aye. Uh, uh, and then uh, shall we, um, uh, um, motion to approve. Motion to uh, to adjourn the meeting? Yep, motion to, to uh, adjourn right. till, until uh, August. August. August, All right, correct? the next meeting will be in August, all right? Okay. So. All right, thank, thank you so much. All right, all right, take care.